Well, good day, Max here again, back in the new shop. So I thought, I've just moved quite a few machines around to put them in their final layout. I still have to bring the machines over from the old shop, the small shop. Um, but yeah, everything here is pretty well in its place where it's going to go now. So I thought I'd just have a, a bit of a wander around so you can see where we're sort of heading for the final layout. So, I'll jump on the other side of the camera and uh, we'll go for a quick wander. Okay, so starting up the end of the shop here. So, along this wall here, I'll put my little 10k south bend over in the corner. That's still over the other shop. We'll have a bench and I might have room in the end here for a, a small press and along this wall here we'll have uh, bench space a bit of shelving a fair bit of shelving and i am possibly going to put my lathe that i currently use over in the other shop up against the wall here i don't really like having it up against a wall in fact i hate it but uh, it's looking like it's possibly the only place it can go so the JFMT lathe, she's ended up just here. So it's in, it's in quite a good spot. I'm happy with the spot there, especially we'll have the bench behind it as well. The Herbert Capstan lathe. The only spot I could find really useful for it was actually right here. So it will work out in a good spot here. Now when I say capstan lathe, because we're of English background, it's called a capstan lathe. Um, if you're in America, um, they call these a turret lathe, so just a bit of terminology, a difference there. Swing back around to the shaper. I'm not real impressed with, <laughs> yeah, not real happy where this has had to, had to go, as it's stolen the space where I usually would have a little table set up there so I could sit down and eat my lunch. But uh, yeah, there's nowhere else for it to go, so that's where it has to be. Uh, we have a beer corner here, so over here will be the bridge port, which is over in the other shop. The lathe, the 24 inch swing lathe, she's just shifted down a little bit and it's looking like it'll work in really well here, as with the horizontal borer. The big milling machine, that's its final resting spot there, as it needs plenty of accessibility. And the radial drill ended up down here, which will be close to the welding area, which is where all this timber is stored, which I will have to move at a later date. This is timber that I have to slab up with the chainsaw into planks. So the messy area over here still has to be tidied up. This will have a timber counter, which is getting made at the moment from another viewer. So that's a, uh, quite a flash bit of timber work he's doing. So that will go across here. The, the big power hacksaw, that's where it's going to live there. So larger materials come straight in the door straight to the saw. Uh, the grinding area is pr pretty well how it has always been except for the cylindrical grinder over in the back there. So this the surface grinder it's appearing to be okay just here. I may just do a slight adjustment with the uh, regards to like its power cabinet and that. So along this wall here We'll have our 
tool and cutter grinder will go in here, then we'll have some bench space and also an offhand tool grinder. So the ID grinder, that's still about the best spot for it. And the Churchill cylindrical grinder, well that's just been rotated around a bit. Um, I'm not overly happy with the fact that it does face the boring mill, but I don't, at this stage uh, I don't really see any way around it, as I don't want to encroach on these open areas through here. So as far as craneage and that sort of thing, what I intend to do is I'm looking at putting in a like a pole crane mounts to the floor and stabilized by the roof structure it doesn't have to be a big one uh 500 kilograms is you know should be fine five six hundred kilograms that'll be fine for down this area 600 kilogram would be better as that is actually the maximum rating that this milling machine can carry which is 600 kilograms I'm um, craneage up the other end to cover all the, the other couple of lathes and the boring mill and of course the bridge port which will be behind me. What I'm looking at doing is the same type of thing, a base plate on the floor, another pole type crane secured up to the roof. And this, you know, 500 kilogram crane, that'll reach over with a three meter arm, that'll reach the bridge port. It'll reach this lathe. That's all it's got to do. It'll actually spin around. It'll reach the shaper as well. So I'll put another one in. So there'll be three pole cranes all up. And the other one will go down here behind the boring mill. And again, secure it up to the roof. So that'll cover the boring mill. And the... Um, lathe here. So with regards to power, what I wanted to avoid was multiple power drops from the ceiling down to the machines. As it impedes the functionality of, you see that gantry crane there, it's that style of crane. So what I want to do is build a bigger version of that. And I want that crane to run to be able to straddle the boring mill and this lathe and come to be able to travel at least up to here or up to the chuck on this lathe you know so what I'm going to take advantage of is our two pole cranes that we have here so the power from the lathe the boring mill and the Herbert capstan lathe can run up the center of those pole cranes. So that, that takes care of any stray cable drops. And er everything else can be conduited straight across the floor to the wall and hidden under duckboards. So, yeah, the, I'm looking at using this beam here for the crane the new gantry crane which will be a project which we will be tackling ASAP <laughs> next year well we have our power dome in so this cables go underground across the road to that lamppost I mean we've just been outside so we've just seen the power dome so we do have to get the, the power in as priority. So probably over in that corner there, I'll put the big switchboard up and then we can start running some power inside to the machines. So <laughs> this thing here, this is a uh, copy turning attachment, a tracer, hydraulic tracer attachment. It's off a of Dean Smith and Grace lathe, or DSG. So I'm going to try and adapt it to fit this lathe. 
So if we can um, pull that one off, it'll be really beneficial to have on this machine here. Oh, yeah, I dug that out the old shed the other day. A couple of other things you do have to consider is, yeah, you've got to leave plenty of room around your, your larger machines because you don't know how long or wide parts are going to be. And also the actual machine itself, you want to make sure, like, for example, this milling machine, when you put the ram all the way back, it can go all the way back without hitting the wall. Same with when we modify the drawbar actuator here. I'm converting this back to a manual drawbar instead of the electric one. That your drawbar for your horizontal arbor, you can actually get it out of the machine without it hitting the wall. And be able to access the rear cabinetry of the machine as well. And of course, a shaper machine is a classic example. Um, it's on casters at the moment, but that's only temporary so I can move it around. It will go on a solid base. But the main thing with a shaper you've got to be careful of too is if you set the machine to full stroke, the ram doesn't come back and punch a hole through your wall. So I have actually heard a story of that happening. Uh, one workshop, they had the shaper set up next to a brick wall and had to do a job which required the full stroke and of course yeah what did it do punched a hole through the brick wall <laughs> just uh yeah something you got to be aware of uh long pieces of stock as well that that comes into play with the placement of your machines i know with this lathe here if anything long has to stick out the spindle it's clear has a clear path it also gives me provision with the shaper here. I can build a support to come off with a set of rollers to hold the part. And the same goes for the other lathe here, the JFMT. There'll be plenty of room behind it for anything that sticks out the spindle. The spindle on the little Herbert. There is a job which I have well, the reason I brought this machine for is to do one particular job and that does involve some long stock, but there's enough room. It will clear here and I can put a support either coming up from the floor to support that job. Plus it does have the option where the original bar feed used to bolt up for a support uh, there as well. So. Got to have clearance too to be able to get uh, chip pans out on this lathe there's two wheeled chip pans and they come out from the rear to be empty so that's another thing you've got to take into consideration so there's a lot of lot of things to think about when you place your machines grinding area is the same um, that's why my plan was to keep these as far as I could down one end of the shop opposite the uh, welding area um, it's just to keep the grinding any grinding dust and debris away from the other machines as, as best that I could although these these machines all run with coolant so it does keep the grinding dust down except of course when you're dressing a wheel yeah so that's the most practical layout that I can come up with I mean I was scratching my head for a long time trying to work it out tried on paper it didn't work out on paper um, so I sat down one day I had a beer and then it all came to me <laughs> quite quickly so main thing my main concern was if anything big came in weighty object that had to have a bit of work done on, on it I'd have an unimpeded easy access to my three largest machines being the boring mill this lathe and a big milling machine so easy machine accessibility was the key and same with the radial drill that's why that's there now of course the welding bench here will end up in its welding area over there so if at any time I have this area um, tied up 
might be doing a fabrication job or something like that. I do have my second entrance, which will be a clear area just here. So I'm not completely blocking the shop off. So that's, that's the plan anyway, so <laughs> we'll see how, how it works out. Anyway, that's a bit of a quick walk around on, on what's going on. Um, progress on the uh, JFMT has just come to a standstill at the moment because I've had to, you know, been moving a lot of other bits and pieces around and into the shop and yeah, we've got a lot on at the moment, but uh, we're still pushing through in small, small dribs and drabs. So, yeah. So yeah, it's going to be a fairly full on year, right from the get go next year. Getting the power net, um, distributed around the shop and of course the main power feeds dug in, cables laid, the gantry crane build and that's so uh, yeah, we've got a, <laughs> we're in for a big year. So anyway, yeah, cheers. Yeah, that was just a quick, quick wander around just to, to show you where I'm at. So anyway, have a great Christmas and uh, we'll see you in the new year.